On this edition of Veterans Health Watch, we'll learn why it's important to take care of our skin and how to protect it from the sun. We'll also learn about skin cancer, and we'll get tips especially for our elderly who are dealing with the hot summer months. So please join us. Welcome to Veterans Health Watch, a program sponsored by the Veterans Affairs Maryland Healthcare System that provides the latest health and benefits information for Maryland's veterans, their family members, and the local community. I'm Kenya Griffin. After a long winter, summer is finally here and it's here to stay. But while you're enjoying the summer sun, there are some precautions you need to take to keep your skin safe and your body's healthy. Joining us to tell us a little more is Sandy Beam, a dermatology nurse care coordinator at the Dermatology Clinic at the VA Maryland Healthcare System. Sandy, thank you so much for joining us. Kenya, thank you for having me today. Well, let's get started with the basics. Who or how do we need to take care of our skin? Well, the skin being the largest organ of our body serves as a lot of protection for us. So we do some general things as far as making sure that you hydrate properly, you moisturize properly to help prevent uh, some other skin toxicities per se. But more importantly, when you're outside enjoying this summertime activity, you really want to make sure you take those precautions that you don't damage it or irreparable damage where you could create some other forms of disease or worst of all, skin cancers. Yeah. So when we're out there and we're out and about, most importantly, sunblock, cover up, shade, some of those basics. And why, again, I should have asked more importantly, why should we take sh such good care of our skin or, or bother with the sunblock? Well, the skin being the largest organ that it protects us in so many ways, um, we want to avoid causing aging, which is one of the things. Um, other skin damages, you can actually become scarred, but more importantly, to prevent a skin cancer possibility or occurrence. We see a lot of benign lesions, which are actually sun-related, that could potentially turn into a skin cancer. So when you're trying to avoid those things is where you wanna bring in your sunblock and your protective clothing and your shade. Um, there are some more specifics on that if you want me to get yeah, into. Yeah, I was gonna ask that next. What, what are some of the recommendations you have to help us protect our skin? Well, with the sunblock, the recommendation by the Dermatology Association is a minimum of an SPF or fif of 15 or higher. And one of the most important aspects with sunblock is proper application. People don't realize there is an activation time frame. So in order to be properly protected, you need to put that sunblock on 20 to 30 minutes before sun exposure. You see a lot of people on the beach doing the spray automatically and it's not any protection for them until the activation occurs. Okay. The other thing that you would like to do is uh, to wear a wide brim hat a lot of baseball caps out there, it doesn't protect the back of the neck, the top of the ears, that type of thing. And particularly in men, you, you will see a lot of sun damage and skin cancers on the top of the ears or even their scalps. So you want a wide brim hat. So you have your sunblock, your wide brim hat. And if you happen to be fair skinned, you might even go for some, some covering truly long sleeve shirts that are lightweight and so forth. The other option is instead of being fully exposed in the sun, put yourself in the shade. You're still going to get a little bit of vitamin D. Yeah. It's going to reflect off of the sand, it's going to reflect off of the water, and it reflects off of buildings as well. And you mentioned the sun block of uh, 15 or 30, or and I've seen some that are higher. Is higher better? No, higher is not necessarily better, and there finally are coming into some regulation aspects. So 15 to 30 is the general rule. And what that, 
that means people are confused with the number they think well that means I can stay out in the sun longer no because you need the reapplication at least a two hour time frame regardless of your SPF two hours or less so if you're swimming you're perspiring or you're toweling off you want to put the sunblock on more frequently it's not one and done yeah you need to continue to apply to have that protection and enjoy your outdoor activities so are there any other myths that you'd like to uh, bust for us today well, one being that an SPF higher is going to make you uh, better protected. That is not true. SPF 15 to 30 is going to be sufficient, but the proper ap application and reapplication. The other thing is it's not just a summer activity. You want to make sure that you're doing it when you ski. As I mentioned earlier, you got the sun reflecting off of the water, the buildings, and the snow, so that you also want to apply sunblock yeah. throughout the winter months, mm. too. If you happen to be a skin cancer survivor, you wanna make sure you're wearing it year round. And there are some moisturizing lotions that have an SPF of 15 in it and also women's makeup. So there you've got some protection. Um, so the myth primarily of the SPF and that it being just a winter time. There's one more myth that is extremely important to send out there and that is that tanning beds are safe and that they provide a base for you so that you can go on the summer vacation or, or to the islands and such. That is absolutely not true at all. If you start tanning in a tanning bed under at the age of 35 or less, and a lot of the seniors, you know, the young girls and teens, you're at a 75% increased risk of developing a skin cancer than the general population just because you're using tanning beds. So you're better off just following those precautions. Following the guidelines, following the precautions, enjoy mother nature as it is with your sunblock, your hat, yeah. your protective clothing, and also sunglasses because there are melanomas of the eyes, yeah. so you really want to protect your eyes as well. And this is real. Um, I, I know you mentioned some of the, the conditions, skin conditions that can happen if you don't protect your skin. What are some of the most common conditions you see as a nurse at the VA? We see a lot of psoriasis. So that particular condition is not sun related. However, exposure to the sun when you have psoriasis or eczema can actually make the condition worse. So again, you don't want to have a sunburn or or make that condition worse because you haven't taken the general precautions during your summer activities. Yeah, even covering your lips, you mentioned you can get the blisters. Sure. Yeah, so lips even for protection sure. for your and lips. And the other thing that's a big myth that I really need to mention, it said that, oh, well, I'm darker skinned, I have dark eyes, I have dark hair. Absolutely not. If you're the lightest of light or the darkest of dark, all populations, all age groups, and both genders, none of us are excluded from the possibility of getting a skin cancer. So it does, it is important that all, all skin types all age Ethnics, groups, yeah. age groups, everyone use precautions. And unfortunately, skin cancer happens and some of the other uh, skin conditions you mentioned happen. What are some of the treatments available? There are a few treatments available depending on the type of skin cancer that you have. So, so the, the treatments, the most effective treatment is actually excision. Skin cancer, including melanoma, is 95% curable with excision and early detection. It's um, the other ones when you get further along, so you may have to get into more of the medical modalities. Uh, as far as the treatments that are available at the VA for general skin conditions, we offer a wide variety. Some of the state-of-the-art processes are going on. We also offer um, the, the hand and foot booths for psoriasis patients that is, that's a UVB therapy. There are laser treatments for certain conditions that are available. We perform the surgeries right there in the dermatology suite, whether it is a simple biopsy or indeed a wide excision of different lesions. And then the medical management. So that may be a form of either a cream application or a pill to take depending on what your issues are. So there are state-of-the-art modalities that are available to our veterans at the dermatology clinic. That's good to know. What if a, a patient, we have to go to a break, and I know you're gonna stay with us for our next segment. So if a patient is experiencing some issues or has dermatology questions, what should they do to schedule a dermatology appointment? 
the most effective way is for them to actually go through their provider. They have to have a consult placed. And once that consult primary is Primary care provider? Primary okay. care provider, right, wherever their, their home base is. So once that is placed, there's two routes that can happen. We have what's called Telederm. So with the Telederm, it's an awesome technology. They actually present to an area where photographs are taken of the issue or the problem. That's forwarded to a dermatologist who reads the photograph via their record through the computer and then it's determined if that veteran needs to come in for face-to-face -face, or it's a matter of uh, a rash let's say in a lotion okay. that can be prescribed so so the, the most efficient way is to go to their primary care provider who in turn would place a consult for either telederm or a direct consult with the dermatology right. clinic well, Sandy, you've gotten us uh, off on a good foot. Okay. Uh, we're going to stay <laughs> with you. And when we come back, we'll have more information about how to protect your skin during the summer months. So please stay with us. The VA Maryland healthcare system pharmacy is second to none. The copay is minimal. The wait time is as good as you would find in a civilian pharmacy. There are various ways our veterans can access uh, pharmacy services. One is just come to the window with their prescription. Two is through a My Healthy Vet, the internet. They can get their prescription through the phone or through our consolidated mail-out pharmacy. We're very proud of our pharmacy services. We're patient focused and we want them to come and see us and what we can do for them. Welcome back to Veterans Health Watch. Before the break, we were speaking with Sandy Beam from the Dermatology Clinic at the VA Maryland Healthcare System about why we should protect our skin. And one of the most important reasons is to avoid skin cancer. Sandy, let's tell us a little bit more. Let's talk a little bit more about skin cancer. How common is skin cancer? Skin cancer is actually the most common cancer among all Americans. There are three variations to it that are in order of how serious they are. One is basal cell, which is 100% caused by overexposure to the sun. So and it's preventable. These are the different kinds of cancers? These are three okay. different types of skin cancers. So the basal cell essentially is a non-life-threatening type of skin cancer. Rarely does it metastasize to other places, but it can be extremely disfiguring where it has to be cut out of areas. And it's usually on sun-exposed areas, the face, the ears, the neck, the scalp. The second one is called squamous cell. Squamous cell is the second as far as the seriousness of it. Uh, a little bit more likely that it could go to other areas of the body, but again, it can be controlled or treated and usually is non-life-threatening. The third and most important is the least common of the three, however, the deadliest, and that is melanoma. Now, we know that melanoma can come from various origins, but there is the preventable one or the one for the skin that we can take our precautions in the sun. Um, melanoma has the possibility of spreading to other areas of the body. It can go to the ovaries, it can go to the colon, it can go to the brain, the liver. So we really want to catch it early and this is the one that is 95% curable with early detection and excision. Okay, so another reason to see your doctor regularly. Absolutely. And pay attention to your body. Um, so you, we talked about using sunscreen, we talked about cover-ups to help protect our skin. What else can we do to help avoid skin cancer? The avoidance of skin cancer is primarily through those those possibilities of using the sunscreen and the shade and the cover-up. However, you can also do self-skin exams, and that comes in with the ABCDEs through the dermatology, the American Dermatology Association, and, and it's really easy to remember, ABCDE, and what they stand for is the asymmetry. So if I've got a spot on my body and I put an imaginary line down the middle of that spot, okay. it should be a mirror image. And if it's not, then it's asymmetrical, and that's a cause for possible concern. 
concern. The next would be borders. If I took a cookie cutter, and even if it was in the shape of a dinosaur, but it's nice clean edges, then the borders are good. But if the borders start to jag out or bleed out, then it may be a point of concern. That would be the second thing. Color, usually moles are one to two colors, regardless if it's brown and black or black and tan, whatever. But if the colors start to change <clears throat> and you see that it's more of a variation and that it's three or more colors, again, a point of concern. Diameter, it should not be any bigger than a pencil eraser, and that's five to six millimeters. Once it gets larger than that, again, you wanna see your medical professional. And then the evolving, is it new? Is it a new lesion or a new mole? Or is it an existing lesion or mole that has changed in the course of time over a year or so? Usually, if you have three or more of those factors of concern, you need to seek some medical mm -hmm. advice and opinion on that. So following the A, B, C, a, B, C D, e. E's and self skin self-examination, mm -hmm. or if you happen to be a skin cancer survivor that you get routine skin exams anyway. Then my next question, the screening. So if you, you talked about the self-examination. Mm -hmm. Are there screen, what types of screenings do you provide for skin cancer? The, the VA doesn't necessarily have skin cancer screenings at this point where you would have general walk-in clinics. However, there are veterans who come in for an annual skin exam. If they have a lot of moles and you wanna make sure any of those have changed in any way, shape, or form, there are photo mapping abilities available at some of the VA dermatology clinics, which is really nice. If you have someone who has a large number of moles, you wanna keep an eye on it. Um, are they atypical? So when, when this veteran comes in for a full body skin exam, it's truly head to toe, stripped down, look between the fingers and the toes and through the hair and keeping an eye out for anything that's of concern. So no time to be shy. No time to be shy, okay. absolutely. Okay. And finally, how treatable is skin cancer? Skin cancer is very treatable when it's caught early and detected early. I have seen some of the veterans come in who unfortunately think that it's a, a scab or a little little um, sore or ulceration that's gonna go away mm -hmm. and they've tried to put creams on it and they have turned into some of the larger skin cancers. So early detection, skin cancer prevention, sunblock use, cover-ups, using the shade, these are all things that are gonna keep you out of the office with very serious medical skin conditions. But I, I love the A, B, C, D, E. Pay attention, follow those things, and if, if any of those uh, factors relate to your lesion or your skin issue, call your doctor. Exactly, Don't seek wait. medical help. The other thing, we have technology with these fancy phones and I do tell the patients, take a picture of that lesion and take a picture of it again in three months time and if you think that there's been a change, then you need to go see a medical mm -hmm. professional for evaluation yeah. to see if there needs to be a biopsy. And bring those pictures with you. Bring those pictures with you, Absolutely. right on your phone. Yeah, so Sandy, we're, we have. is there anything else you'd like to share with us? You've shared some great information. You talked about Mel melanoma and how it is uh, skin or sun related but that it can spread to other parts of the body it can spread to other parts of the body so if indeed you see that you've got some swelling this is another point of concern and people usually will seek primary care provider and that's where melanoma may have gone to a lymph node so the, the sun form or cutaneous form of melanoma is actually the least common, but then there are some that are unknown origin. And that's where your genetics come in. There are some people that are pre predisposed to certain diseases and also certain skin types. So if you're fair haired, light eyed, light skin, I mean, yeah, light skinned, then you're at a higher risk than someone who is dark hair, dark skin, dark eyes, but that's a genetic possibility there. So those folks seem to be a little bit more vigilant than people who are on the lower risk side. The bottom line is none of us should be free of concern of the possibility of skin cancer and we all should take precautions when we're out in the sun to avoid something that is potentially avoidable. And you also mentioned so many of the treatment modalities there at the VA Maryland Healthcare System. Could you tell us more about Mo surgery? Or, or Mo surgery is actually a very good treatment modality for skin cancers. And what that is, is uh, it's a skin sparing surgery. So the physician will go and take out what looks to be the majority of the tumor with a small edge. That's most used on the face, the ears, areas that you have little normal tissue okay. to be able to, to pull together. And then if indeed they, it's a, it's a long extensive process. So once that tissue is removed, it then gets put under the microscope 
microscope after being processed and the physicians look at it right then and there, if it seems to have more cancer cells at the edges or the margins they're called, then the physician will go back and again take a small slice of normal of tissue from that area to be processed and looked at again. So the, the ultimate goal to that is to spare as much normal yeah. tissue to, and remove all of those mm -hmm. cancer cells. And that's great to hear. Thank you so much, Sandy, for joining us and giving us great information on how to protect our skin during the summer months. Thank you for having me today. We're gonna to take a short break, but when we return, we'll have tips to help our seniors cope with the hot, hazy summer days. So please stay tuned. Take a good look at yourself. Oh, yeah. And turn. Oh, very nice. Check that smooth backside one more time. No, really, check it. Do you see any changing or suspicious spots? It's your skin, and it's important. If you're a man over 50, you're in the group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the cancer that kills one person every hour. When detected early, skin cancer is highly treatable. Check yourself out. And find someone else to help. Learn more about what to look for at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Welcome back to Veterans Health Watch. Some of us love the heat, but, but for the elderly, it could be a dangerous time of year. Joining us is Dr. Fair Bazorgi, the medical director for the Lock Raven VA Community Living and Rehabilitation Center to tell us more. Dr. Bazorgi, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Why do seniors especially need to take precautions during the summer? Uh, well, the high heat and humidity can worsen the medical conditions. Um, our bodies have me mechanisms to regulate the heat, and unfortunately, as we get older, these mechanisms are not working as well as they should. So mm, most of our elderly persons also have chronic medical chronic conditions. This uh, chronic conditions also impairs the body ability to regulate the heat, and some of the medications that they take for these medical conditions also can affect the, uh, this mechanism. So overall, they are more prone to mm -hmm. heat and to get dehydrated during this high temperature. Yeah, season. we don't realize how important it is for our, the work that our own bodies do to regulate the heat. So what's the best way for seniors to get through the hot summer months? It would be best if they can stay inside for the most part. If um, they have to go out, it would be better to go out during the early hours of the day or the later hours of the day, especially between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. with the heat is really high, mm -hmm. they better stay home in with the air conditioning and with the cool temperatures. Um, or if they have to go out, they can use the public facilities like libraries or in the malls where the air conditioning is provided. And unfortunately, not every senior has access to air conditioning. And I know some seniors in Baltimore City or in certain areas stay closed in. And what advice would you give a senior who is homebound and doesn't have air conditioning, central air conditioning? Well, they can use the fans and they should be in the shaded area. They can use cool baths or showers or drink cool beverages. It mm -hmm. will help to mm, keep the body temperature mm, down and prevent from the heat exposure. Right, especially drinking those cool fluids are, serves a double purpose, keeping them dehydrated and keeping their body temperatures cool. Exactly, exactly. Uh, it's good to drink um, beverage, cool beverages, as much as possible. Water is the best drink, and it's good to stay away from alcohol or coffee as they have some diuretic effect and they can help in getting dehydrated. Um, people should not wait until they, first, uh, they feel very thirsty because by then they could be already dehydrated. Okay. So it's better to drink a lot of water as and much as they can. What happens if a person is dehydrated and doesn't act on it? 
Uh, usually our body, in order to bring the temperature down, we sweat. And sweating causes this um, temperature regulation. When we are dehydrated, we are not, we don't sweat enough. And this causes us to be prone to the heat stroke. Okay. Uh, the symptoms for heat stroke could be um, dizziness, um, headache, rapid pulse, increased temperature, body temperature, and uh, headaches, and at time it can cause even hallucinations. So it's a really dangerous situation, and it's an emergency. And I know for a regular stroke, you can look for certain sign, signs that a person has, you know, drooping face or hard, uh, hard time with speech. Are th is that the same for if someone's having a heat stroke? What symptoms should another person look for, maybe in, the, in an er elderly parent or neighbor if they're having a heat stroke? Uh, like I said, the increased body temperature, the flushed face, and the dizziness, the confusion, the headaches, all of these are symptoms that should be looked at. And what should you do if you see those symptoms or, or are experiencing those symptoms? Um, well, it's an emergency, like I said, the heat stroke, so it's better to call 911. Meanwhile, until the paramedics get there, it's good to take the person into a shaded area. It's better to um, give them fluids if they're alert enough to drink fluids, to bring, try to bring the body temperature down by using the ice packs or um, cold uh, clothing. And um, if they're confused or they're vomiting, we should not force okay. them to drink water because it can cause aspiration. And always call, just call 911 exactly. for help. And exactly. we mentioned before some of our elderly, they, they tend to shut themselves in. Um, when you reach out for help or a ask them for help, they don't always take the help. So we want to look out for our neighbors. What can we do to help our neighbors or our family members who happen to be elderly during the summer months? How can we help them? Um, we should uh, check on them more frequently. A lot of our elders really, they do not like to bother uh, others or they might think that it's okay and nothing bad is going to happen. Their assessment of the situation could mm -hmm. be wrong. If we have an elderly parent, family, friend, we should check on them more and more frequently. Um, it's good to mention a statistics that was done during uh, 1999 and until 2003. There was like almost 3,500 heat-related deaths. Out of these 3,500, 65% were re related directly to the extreme heat that mm -hmm. was the cause of the death. And in the rest of them, the heat was contributing fa factor to the death. So it's really important to take the heat very seriously and check more frequently. It would be good if we consider taking them in for the hottest time of the year to have more access to them and monitor yeah. them more frequently. Yeah. Well, Dr. Rizorghi, thank you so much for sharing this information with us. We want to keep ourselves and, and, our, and the elderly that we support, we want to keep them healthy during the summer months. So thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. I'm happy to be here. Well, we're out of time for today's show, but if you have questions about today's show or would like to make suggestions for future topics, please call us at 1-800-949-1003, extension 5407, or you can visit our webpage at maryland.va.gov. You can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter. And remember, if you are a veteran or you know a veteran who is not using the VA Maryland healthcare system, please stop by one of our facilities across the state you can visit our webpage at maryland.va.gov or you can call our enrollment center at 1-800-463-6295, extension 7324. We look forward to ser serving you. Please join us next time. The telephone care line is available 24 hours a day, 
seven days a week. If you've got a question about medication, diabetes, your, di your diagnosis, any concerns, you can always give us a call. People want to hear a live voice and not the machine. We're always there to answer your questions. Give us a call. 800-865-2441 and press 1 to speak to a nurse. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. A nurse is happy to help you.